joint product process costing. Sometimes one process may produce several products, main or supplementary. The main product manufactured from a process with full sales market value are known as the joint products. So additional products incidental to the process with a relatively lower sales value becomes a byproduct. So in a process, you can have the main product that is the ones that the business is expected to sell. Then you have ones that are literally the waste product, but sometimes has a market value. Of course, lower than what the regular goods have. So the accounting treatment for joint products is that the sales of any byproduct are to be less from the joint cost of the process. Then the resulting net cost is then to be apportioned between the joint products. Now there are two ways of apportioning this joint cost. One is the physical unit basis and the second is the market value at the point of separation basis. Let's take a look at the physical unit basis first. So here, the joint products have the same cost per unit applied to them. So when we test our understanding, during April, the following costs were incurred in the process. 5,000 kg materials going at a cost of $40,000. Labor, $35,000. Overhead, $15,500. The production from the process was as follows. Put at A, 2,500 kg at a selling price of $10 per kg. The product B had an output of 2,000 kilograms at a selling price of $5 per kilogram. Now the byproduct X had a quantity of 500 kilograms with a scrap value of $1 per kilogram. Calculate a cost per unit for A and B using the physical unit. So for solution, the production cost material $40,000. Labor $35,000. Overheads of $15,500. Giving a total joint cost of $90,500. Now the byproduct scrap value is $500. That is the 500 quantity produced at its scrap value of $1. So the net cost is now $90,000. So this is what is going to be split on a physical basis to the two joint products. So for production units, A was $2,500. B was 2,000. So the total physical unit produced was 4,500. So we are going to apportion on this basis. So for the cost per unit of A and B, it's going to be $20 per unit, which is the 90,000 net cost divided by the 4,500 total production unit. So this one is going to be applied to both A and B. The next valuation basis is the market value. So here, the market value of the joint products form the basis for determining the cost per unit. We test our understanding. During April, the following costs were incurred in the process. Materials for 5,000 kilograms of input was $40,000. Labor was $35,000. Overhead was $15,500. The production from the process was as follows. Product A, output was 2,500 kilograms with a selling price of $10 per kilogram. Product B, 2,000 kilograms with a selling price of $5 per kilogram. By product X, 500 kilograms with a scrap value of $1 per kilogram. Sales during the period were 1,000 kilograms for A and 2,000 kilograms for B. We have to calculate a cost per kilogram for A and B using a market basis. For solution, we start with the production cost. So materials, $40,000. Labor $35,000. Overhead $15,500. Joint cost is $90,500. Then, as usual, we less the scrap value for the byproduct $500. Then we get a net cost of $90,000. When we come to the market value, for A, the selling price was $10,000. That is a thousand units that were sold at their selling price of $10 each. For B, 2,000 units were sold. The selling price was five dollars, also leading to ten thousand dollars. So the total is twenty thousand dollars. When we come to the allocation of the joint cost, we are going to do so based on their market value. For A, it's going to be forty-five thousand dollars. That is ten thousand market value of A divided by the total market value of twenty thousand times the ninety thousand dollars production cost. For B, it will also be forty-five thousand because it had. A market value of ten thousand divided by the total market value of twenty thousand multiplied by the ninety thousand total production cost. 
So now the cost per unit for A will be $18. That is eight allocated cost divided by the total production unit. That is $2,500. For B will be $22.5. Eight allocated cost divided by its volume of production. That is $2,000. Let's look at net realizable value. So the market value less further cost incurred after leaving the joint process is used in the appropriation. So when we test our understanding, during April, the following costs were incurred in the process. Materials for 5,000 kg was $40,000. Labor was $35,000. Overheads were $15,500. So the production from the process was as follows. Product A was 2,500 kg, selling price of $10 per kg. Product B, 2,000 kg, with a selling price of $5 per kg. Byproduct X, 500 kg output with a scrap value of $1 per kg. Sales during the period were 1,000 kg for A and 2,000 kg for B. Further processing costs for A and B are $2 and $1.5 respectively. We are to calculate the cost per kg for A and B using the net realizable value basis. So for solution, again, the production cost $90,000. Then the net realizable value, the value for A is going to be 8,000. That is the 1,000 units that were sold multiplied by the net of the original sales value less the further cost of processing of $2. B will give $7,000. Its quantity sold 2,000 times original sales value of 5 less further processing cost of $1.5. So the total net realizable value is now $15,000. That is what is going to be used for the apportionment. So when apportioning joint cost to A and B, A is going to be $48,000. That is the 8,000 net realizable value divided by the total of $15,000 multiplied by the joint production cost of $90,000. B is going to be $42,000. Its net realizable value of $7,000 divided by the total multiplied by the joint cost of production. So cost per unit for A is going to be $19.2, which is the 48,000 allocated cost divided by its volume of production, 2,500. For B is going to be $21, that is the 42,000 allocated cost divided by its quantity of output, 2,000. We've come to the end of today's presentation. Thank you very much for staying tuned. God bless you.